Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to six player cooperative expansion for Viticulture, Viticulture World, designed by Mahir Shah and Francesco Tassini, and published by Stonemeyer Games, who helped sponsor this video. In the past, you've competed with other winemakers when playing the original or essential editions of Viticulture. But here, it's time to work with your extended family and grow your business into a global enterprise as you and the other players tackle challenges together in order to make a name for yourselves across the globe. This expansion uses components from the core game, so you'll need a copy of that. But it's also compatible with the Tuscany, Moors Visitors, and Visit from the Rhine Valley expansions. But those other expansions are not required to play Viticulture World. Now this video does assume you already know how to play Viticulture. But if you don't, we have a video teaching its rules, which I'll link in the description if you want to watch that before coming back. But otherwise, join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, you first need to replace some cards from your original game of Viticulture and any expansions you may have. The ones you need to find and replace are listed right here on the back of the Viticulture World Rulebook. And if they come from an expansion, that expansion will be named just beneath them here. In this video, we'll assume that I don't have any of the expansions. So I just need to replace two of the Summer Visitors and four of the Winter Visitors. Here, I have these separated from their decks in the original game, and you'll find an exact duplicate in Viticulture World for each of these, except that the border of the cards have been changed from white to black. You will now permanently replace all of the white-bordered versions with the black-bordered ones. You now shuffle all of these replacement cards back into the original decks, and the cards you replaced, you won't need anymore. Now remember, there is no difference between the new cards and the old ones, other than the colors of their borders. So why are they being replaced? Well, the answer is actually quite clever. These cards are simply not compatible with Viticulture World, but they can still be used in regular Viticulture. So rather than have you remove these cards each time you wish to play the cooperative mode, you can leave these shuffled into their related decks. While playing regular Viticulture, if you draw one of the black-bordered cards, just treat it as normal. However, when playing Viticulture World, if you draw one with a black border, that means it's not compatible with this mode, so just discard it immediately and draw a replacement. And this is why you can get rid of the original white-bordered cards that you replaced, because you really won't need to use them again. And with that understood, now let's get back to setting up the game fully. First, set the double-sided board in the middle of the play area. Use this side with the extra orange spaces here if you're playing with structure cards from the Tuscany expansion. Otherwise, use this side as we'll be doing here. Now shuffle and set the green, yellow, purple, and blue decks on the spaces for them. Again, also adding the orange deck if you're using the other side of the board. In this area, we have the new wake-up chart. And on this space, you set the gray temporary worker. By the board, set the glass, grape, and wine tokens, and lira. I have mine in some trays that I have, and if you'd like some of your own, you'll find links in the description. Now it's time to pick which of the included continent challenges you wish to play. Each has a different level of difficulty, as shown in the rulebook and on screen, but they recommend that you start with the easiest challenge, Green Gully, and then work your way through the others in order. New players to Viticulture World, even if they're experienced in regular Viticulture, might still find the included introductory continent of Green Gully to be quite a challenge as they get used to this new mode of play. And if so, Stonemaier Games is offering a free first game continent promo pack on their website to anyone who orders Viticulture World from them, which I'll link to below. And that promo pack is also available as a free print and play continent that I'll also link to in the description that you can cut out and use if you'd prefer to start there. I'll be using the included introductory Green Gully Continent Pack in this video, setting its related cards nearby, along with this event token. Now read out loud the story card for your selected continent, and when done, just set that aside. Then read the setup and rules card. We'll go over these rules during the video, but for now, check out this last rule, which tells us to find Innovation Tile P and set it near the game board. Innovation tiles are the rectangle and oval-shaped ones with these symbols on their backs. First, in any setup, always locate the H and N tiles that show this robot symbol. These Innovation tiles are only used in solo play, so return them to the box. Then, as the setup told us, now find this rectangular innovation tile labeled with a P. We set this on its own by the board for now, and the game will tell us later when we can use it. 
The other innovation tiles you shuffle separately and then set face down by the board in two stacks. Now take the rest of the cards for your chosen continent and order them by the values here on the bottom so that when they're face down, they go in order with the one on top and the six on the bottom. Later continents might have more than six cards and if so, return any with a number higher than six back to the box. With your deck created, now set it into the area for it here on the board. In future games, when playing a continent again, if you want increased variety, instead of ordering the event cards, take all of the ones for that continent, including any with values higher than six, and shuffle them together. Then deal six face down to create your event deck, returning any leftovers unseen back to the box. Either way, with that done, we now add this influence token to the space of this influence track that shows your number of players. We'll assume we have three players in this video, so it goes here. In this area of the board, we have the year track, and you set the grape token on this first space. Next, each player takes a vineyard mat and places field cards on it as usual, with all the tokens in their color set nearby. Then have every player return one of their regular workers to the box, leaving four regular and one grande worker. To your regular workers, find and add two of the blue hats to them. And then find and place two of the yellow hats on the others. These are made of a soft rubber, which makes it easy to add and remove the hats as necessary. Everyone now puts their residual payment token on the center of this residual track of the board and also places their victory point token on this start space of this track. And in the game, these points represent your reputation. This expansion comes with new blue and red cards, which can be mixed in with the original Mamas and Papas cards. And then each player draws one card from each deck to reveal their starting items. Just know you will always start with your grande and four regular workers, so just ignore that portion of the card's rewards. For this reason, they recommend you don't use Papa Raphael or Gary when playing this cooperative mode. Also, the mix of genders on the new blue and red cards could provide you with two starting papas and two starting mamas instead of limiting players to heteronormative pairings. But otherwise, that's the setup. In Viticulture World, you and the other players will be working together to achieve a common goal of getting each player to at least 25 victory points and getting the Maple Leaf Influence token to the end of its track, all by the end of the sixth year, which is tracked here on the board. It is possible to earn more than 25 points and a player reaching 30 gains an influence, advancing this marker one space and at most, each player can earn this bonus once per game. Since players will be working together, any card effects on visitor or structure cards that refer to an opponent, instead just refer to your fellow players. Also, everyone can play with their hand of cards visible to everyone, or keep them hidden as usual depending on player preference. I like keeping mine face up on the table, so that's what I'll do here. With that understood, now let's go through how a year is played, starting with spring, where you'll follow three steps. First, flip over the top card of the event deck and set it here. Read the historical flavor text in this area out loud, and then everyone should take note of the gameplay effect here at the bottom, which will only apply during the current year. In this case, we have a new space workers can be sent, and we'll talk more about this a little later. As an aside, when you're playing some of the other continent challenges that come in the game, their events effects might modify a specific action of the board. In this case, the event here modifies what happens when a player goes to action space E. To help remind you of this, it will instruct you to place the event token, which is this here, on that particular event. Now, when a player uses that particular action, this marker acts as a reminder that there are some additional rules on the event card that they should refer to. And with that understood, let's get back to the spring phase, where next, if any tiles are remaining in this area of the board, they are discarded. And then you reveal two new tiles from each of these stacks and set them into the related spaces for them in this area. Finally, players decide together what wake-up positions they'd like to have, putting their roosters on the related green spaces and gaining the benefit showing within the green rim of the space that they've picked. This circle also sets the turn order, beginning from the space with the green icon and going clockwise. So in a case like this, the blue player goes first, then the white player, and then purple. And with that, we go from spring to summer. 
In turn order, based on the wake up positions, each player chooses one of the following options. Either place a worker on a summer action or pass. Many of the actions are similar to what you'd know from regular viticulture, but there are some differences, both in the spaces themselves and how they're used. So let's take a look. First, you'll only find two spaces per action, and the rightmost space can only be used in games with four to six players. So in our three player game, we can never put a worker here or here, for example. Also notice there are no bonuses within the action spaces themselves. Bonuses can be added later, as we'll see, but these symbols that you might find within some of the action areas are not bonuses that you collect when you place a worker there. Instead, we'll see how these symbols are resolved a little later. Now it's time to talk about the types of workers that you can add to a space, which means it's finally time to discuss these fashionable little hats they're wearing. Workers with hats are known as seasonal workers and can only be used on actions related to their season. A yellow hat is a summer worker, and blue is a winter worker. In other words, during summer, I cannot use either of these workers to take actions, and I can't use either of these workers in winter. Although summer comes first, I want to quickly take you over to one of the winter actions, as its effects are important to understand now. In winter, you can send a worker to this train action and here pay four lira, as shown, to remove a hat from one of your workers, which could include the one that you placed here. Just pop its little hat off and return it to the box. A worker without a hat is known as a trained worker and can be used on action spaces in either summer or winter. The gray temporary worker and your grande worker do not have hats, so they can be used in either season. And the grande worker, as usual, can be placed on an action space that is already full. However, the grande worker has a new special ability. Anytime a player adds their grande worker to a space, before or after resolving the action there, they may choose to perform a trade with exactly one other player who has a worker there. You'll find the rules for a trade printed right here on the board. A trade lets you pick any one of these symbols and trade as much of it for as much of any one other symbol here. So for example, a player could trade six lira to someone and then get two purple wine orders back. And just so it's clear, this symbol doesn't mean any number of grape tokens, but instead a single grape of any value. Likewise, this is a single wine token of any value. Also, when performing a trade, you can just give something to another player without receiving anything back, or just receive something and not give anything away. And keep in mind, a trade can only be initiated by the person who's placing their grande worker, and only if both players agree. Okay, with that understood, let's go back to learning about the summer spaces that are unique to this version of the game. This action allows you to pay any one of the listed items to gain any one of the other items. So for example, I could pay one victory point and then draw any two cards from either the same or different decks. Or I could discard any two cards I have to gain a value one grape. Or pay three lira to gain a victory point, and so on. Here's an important new space. Going here allows you to pay four lira in order to gain one innovation tile. You then pick any of the face-up tiles here. If you select a rectangular tile, check the letter on it, and then place it into the action space matching that letter. This innovation will make the actions of that space better anytime that action is taken in the future. Before, it would cost four lira to train a worker. Now it only costs two, and each time you train a worker, you gain a victory point. All of the rectangular innovation tiles should be easy to understand, but let's take a quick look at this one. It lets you either buy or sell an unplanted field, or buy or sell one grape. Selling grapes works the same way as in the core game, but to buy a grape, you pay the cost from one of these rows, and then set a token into that row's leftmost available space, or into the previous row if that leftmost space is full. So if I spent two lira and wanted a white grape, I could put it here. On the other hand, if I wanted to spend two lira to buy a red grape, this space is full, so I'd place my marker here. So that covers taking rectangular innovation tiles, but if you take an oval innovation, instead set it on any dotted oval outline of the board that doesn't already have a tile. If a worker is already in that space, just move it onto the tile, but otherwise nothing else happens to it. If the space you covered up with the tile shows a benefit, which will have a symbol like this representing all the players, 
then all the players gain this related benefit when the space is covered up. So here, each player would choose to gain either a value to red or white grape. If the space you would cover up has a red outlined symbol, that's a cost that the player adding the tile must pay. So I'd have to pay two lira to add this tile here. So, what are the benefits of these oval tiles? Well, any number of workers can now be assigned to them no matter how many players you have. Not only that, if you placed a trained worker on one of these spaces, you gain the bonus printed on the oval tile. So in this case, I'd gain one lira. And remember, a trained worker is any regular worker with no hat, as well as the temporary and grande workers. A worker with a hat can still go here, it just doesn't gain the bonus on the innovation tile. This innovation tile shows one of the new symbols that comes in this expansion. And when resolved, it means the player gets to age one of their wine tokens one step. Some innovation tiles will show an arrow, and when added to a space, ensure the line under the arrow is at the bottom. When a trained worker is set here, they get the bonus showing on any innovation tile directly adjacent in that direction. So right now, going here would do nothing. But let's say instead this innovation tile was here. Now when a worker is set onto this space, they would get to draw a green card. Innovation tiles can also point to other innovation tiles that point to other innovation tiles. And if so, they create a chain. This means going here would trigger this arrow, which points me to this tile, which then points me here, allowing me to draw a yellow card. So that's how you use innovations. And when you take one from this area, do not replace it with a new one. These only get refreshed during spring, as we saw earlier. Again, during summer, players will either place a worker or pass. And when a player passes, they immediately resolve the following fall steps, even if other players are still taking actions in summer. First, they move their rooster directly to the inner ring position of the wake-up chart, ensuring that the player order doesn't change. Then, they pick any one of the benefits showing in the center, either two lira, drawing any one card, or they age one of their grapes. Also, if you have a cottage, you draw a visitor card at this time as usual. Then, with your fall phase over, you just wait for the other players to pass and resolve their fall phases as well. And once everyone has, it's time to move on to winter. Here, again, following the turn order, players will either place one of their remaining workers or pass. Again, many of the winter actions will be familiar to you, but there are a couple of unique ones to go over. Training a worker we learned about earlier, so instead, let's go down to these bottom two, and this one here allows you to sell one wine token. To do this, just discard one from your seller, and then gain lira equal to its wine value, so getting rid of this one would earn me six lira. Going to this action space lets you pay eight lira to gain one influence, which you show by moving the marker here on this track. But you'll also find other ways to gain influence, usually from certain event cards that will appear here. Speaking of which, these events may have action spaces as well, which work exactly like other action spaces of the board, unless they say otherwise. Also, the actions printed on event cards can be used during any season. In the same way, this space of the board can also have workers sent to it during any season, and any number of workers can be sent here. All right, once everyone is passed in winter, you then move to the year-end steps, which are pretty similar to the core game, except that every player performs those year-end steps as soon as they pass during winter. And since that involves taking back their workers, it means they could actually free up some spaces for other players to use who are still taking winter actions. When resolving your year-end, just follow the steps printed here on the board. And you'll notice one change from regular viticulture is that you discard down to five cards instead of the usual seven. Once everyone has passed in winter, you then advance the grape marker one space forward and start a new year. However, at the end of the sixth year, you'll check to see if all of the players have at least 25 victory points and that the influence token is at the end of its track. If so, all the players win. Otherwise, they all lose. And don't forget, there are several other continent challenges you can take on, each with their own unique events and surprises, and these can be repeated as often as you like. The game also comes with components and rules for solo play in this separate rulebook, but those rules I'll leave for you to discover on your own. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play the Viticulture World expansion. If you have any questions at all, though, about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. 
You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.